the key to getting better at chess tactics starts with having a good store of basic patterns that you already know to begin with. And this is something which anyone with a few minutes a day and some self-discipline can acquire. It's not, it's not about talent. When you see an IM or GM or, or just somebody who's good at tactics calculating super fast and you're like, how can they calculate that fast? The answer is they can't. They're not calculating that fast. They're remembering little patterns that they already knew. And you can do that too. You just have to put those same thousands and thousands of patterns that they have into your head, store them in there, and they'll pop out at you as well. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, oh yeah, and we're going to go to easy puzzles for today to learn these basic patterns. What Basically what you need to know at first are a bunch of like one to two move patterns. Um, these patterns are like common checkmates, you know, discovered attacks, all kinds of really simple little things. And you just need to, what are you saying? And you just need to, you just need to have seen them before and they pop into your head. Like in this position here, for example, the queen attacks the queen. So you look for knight checks here and you can win the queen, right? You don't solve this position by calculating rook d8 and queen g2 and knight e4, right? If you start just calculating this move, you're probably not even going to find the right answer even though it's the right move because you're just calculating it, right? You need to just see that there's these two things together as soon as you see the position. Um, actually, let me set up a position for you to also help make this point. Okay, I'm going to do a board editor. Can you guys see this board okay if I put it like that? You can see the whole board, right? So, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't get the board completely perfect. I think this is as close as it's going to get. And I think you can still tell like where the rooks are, right? So let's take, let's take this position here as an example. Um, in this position, there's a checkmate available for white. But if you start looking at this position and just trying to calculate and you don't know the checkmate in two, in my experience, people don't find this on their own. Okay, if you just start calculating possible moves. Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> We're in board setup mode, not moving mode, so those things all just went away. Anyway, um, I've shown positions of this type to a lot of um, beginning players. And um, if they haven't seen the pattern before, even though it's a checkmate in two moves, they can look at this for 10, 15 minutes and never find the answer just by trying out lots of moves. But if you know the pattern, like some of you do, then you just see this option. It's just one of your options. It's not a calculation. It's not a series of moves. It's just a chunk, right? It's an, I can go queen h8, knight h6 mate here, right? I can do this little mate. Um, so basically the solution to being able to calculate is not to be able to go for, is not just to be able to go move by move, looking at all kinds of moves really fast. It's to have a store of little chunks and patterns like that one that you know. Okay, 
So uh, you're going to need thousands and thousands of these little chunks. Let's say at least 2,000 probably of these little chunks in your head to just call up and put together to make more complicated tactics during your games. And to get those little chunks, you basically just need to see them. And in the old days, it's always a funny feeling going from being like, like a young person to an old person. Um, and I've just recently made that transition myself. So now all the time I'm saying in the old days, you know, back in my day before X, Y, and Z, I know a million people have had this experience before, nothing new to it. Anyway, in the old days, we would get these positions from chess books. So you'd get a book that would be, like in my case, the first one I had was 1001 Brilliant Checkmates by Reinfeld. And then I think he made 1001 books by the name of 1001 Brilliant Somethings. And they were checkmates and sacrifices and combinations and tactics and blah, blah, blahs. So you could go through those and you could learn basically like a thousand chunks there um, by learning all the all the puzzles in one of those books. And you could go through a couple of those books. There were some other books of that type. Um, uh, there's a really cool book that somebody was asking about on stream last week called Imagination and Chess by Pat Gaprindashvili, which has some really good and very unusual little patterns in it. Yeah, a book is like, it's like a bunch of pieces of paper stuck together with stuff printed on them. Anyway, you don't need to know. It's, it's not going to be relevant for you. Um, maybe they'll talk about it in history class someday for you um, and discuss like how people used to make books and what they did with them and so on. But anyway, um, that's where we would get puzzles. Nowadays, um, there's a bunch of good digital sources of puzzles, which is much, much, much faster to use and have many, many, many more positions than before. Imagine chess is very tough, but it's not because the positions are 10 move long combinations, right? It's because it's because he's select, they've selected out some very unusual short patterns. So it'll really like bend your mind, but give you a bigger vocabulary of these basic um, tactical patterns, a bigger vocabulary than most people have. Um, sorry, answering questions sometimes makes me lose my train of thought. Yes, I was going to give you a list of places where you could now find these tactics. Okay, um, one is uh, right in front of you, this um, Lee Chess training um i may be missing something but in my experience so far it's not the best one out there the one that's been out there the longest that i know is good is the chess tempo um tactics trainer that's been out there for a long time and that's a site which really like specializes in their tactics trainer i think they've added like end game studies and some other types of puzzles and and features now but for a long time it was just chess tactics and so as you can imagine it's a very good product for tactics and uh, the one on chess.com also has you know tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of positions at this point um, of good good quality of the kind of thing that that you might want um, if you're a kid on chesskid.com uh, we dumped in like thousands and thousands and thousands of checkmates in one at the low rating level problems. So that is, um, so that's really good if you're like a super beginner. I don't know if there's any like kids watching right now, but if you're a super beginner, if you're like a kid, um, you know, going through tons of checkmates in one is even very useful. Those are good, pat that's like the first set of patterns you need to know. And uh, speaking of books, there's a famous book by Polgar, which I forgot to mention when I was listing books. Laszlo Polgar, the father of the three Polgar sisters, you know, Judah Polgar and Susan and Sophia, he put together a giant book, which I think he might have just called Chess, <laughs> but it's basically like a thousand made in ones, a thousand made in twos, and then some made in threes, 
or maybe maybe more like 5,000 of them. It's like a giant book, and it's just like made in one, 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 made in one for like, you know, 200 pages, and then you get to do made in twos for another 200 pages. That um, is exactly the same kind of thing, but in like book form. But nowadays, I mean, like, you know, Lee Chess, Chess Tempo, Chess.com, this probably probably every like big site has or probably there's a few other big sites that have tactics trainers like i would guess that chess 24 has a tactics trainer thing on it if that's somewhere where you guys um go sometimes i don't know i've never used it so i won't know if it's any good or not or if it exists but um they probably have something anyway all of these things now have way more than 5000 puzzles in them right they'll have like 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 puzzles. So, um, yeah. So, um, so that's just like an inexhaustible store of what you need. So now that you know the source, how should you go about studying these positions and adding them to your mind? Okay. Um, so the first thing is, I've been told, and I'm not an expert in neuroscience or anything like that, so I'm not promising you this is true, but this is what I understand, and I think it's it's plausible and it's worked for me and my students. I've been told that you can't learn like 500 new patterns in one day, that like your brain's not going to really absorb them the way that we want them absorbed and like turn them into something that you just have at a snap of the finger. Like when, you know, when you've got this 94 check, king moves, queen takes a6, say I show you that one, or say I show you this queen h8, knight h6 checkmate, right? My thought, the idea is that the next, that you're not going to necessarily think about that position every day, you're not necessarily going to remember it like you could like two weeks from now tell your friend like, hey, let me show you this checkmate that I saw on a, on a Twitch stream the other day. But you are going to remember it in the sense that when you get a similar position, at the exact moment when this pattern could be useful to you, suddenly it's going to pop into your head and you're going to be like, wait, can't I just queen h8, knight h8, knight h6 mate here? Okay? So that's when, that's the kind of memory that you're going to have of it. So we want you to remember the patterns like this. What I've been, what I've been told is that if you learn like, if you do like 500 puzzles in a day, your brain's not going to absorb like 500 of those patterns and keep them at your fingertips in the way you want. Okay? Um... Okay. Um, yeah, some people are talking about some more advanced calculation stuff in the chat right now, like writing down your answers and double checking your solutions and stuff like that. Um, for for a puzzle like this one here, there's really not a lot to double check. I mean, you either see this one or you don't. Okay, what you're saying is is relevant to like more complicated tactics, which are a mix of multiple, which first of all have more than one variation. They have multiple variations, right? So they've got like two different defenses and you use two different tactics to defeat two different defenses, right? Or they've got three different defenses or there's one solution which doesn't work because of a defense and another solution which does work and you're supposed to check which one does or doesn't, right? Um, so that that's that's a different matter which we'll talk about on another day. Today is just how to learn chess tactics one. There are four different parts to this because unlike end games where I only have one real way to study them, <laughs> I've done a bit more on tactics and I've got four different levels to it. Anyway, so for this basic level, um, 94 queen, e, queen a6, you basically see it or you don't, okay? So back to the question of how many you can absorb at a time in a day and have them just in there for you to like be like, oh, I see it, oh, I see it, it's coming up, okay? For those... Um, my understanding is that you can learn like two or three in a day to like really absorb and save and keep. So as somebody already went ahead and said correctly in the chat, you're, you're not looking to do two hours once a week. Like you're not looking Saturday evening to pound tactics all night and then get the 50 positions that you needed to learn that week. No, what you need to do is you need to do like three each day and you can do it really fast. Um, you know, you can do it faster than the 20 minutes he's suggesting. I mean, you could do it in 10 minutes. You can do it in 10 to 15 minutes for sure. But that, but what you need is you need the discipline to do it every day. And one of the greatest chess teachers that I have ever met or known, um, who I learned most of my chess teaching from, um, 
said once said that if you simply tell a student that every day they should get out a chessboard and set it up if your student does that every day for a month that student will become a master that's it all they have to do is they don't have to study anything they don't have to play out any games they don't have to practice nothing they just have to get out their chessboard and set it up every day and the point obviously is it requires a certain kind of self-discipline to never miss that, even if it's just like a one minute activity. If you're doing that every day, you've built in the kind of self-discipline to control and advance yourself in any kind of field really, right? Additionally, if you're getting out that chessboard every day, aren't you gonna get itchy fingers? Aren't you gonna do something on the chessboard? But you know, this teacher is saying, it doesn't even matter what they do once they get that chessboard out, right? It doesn't matter if they pull out my 60 memorable games or if they play a blitz game against themselves while running around the board in a circle and laughing maniacally, right? Whichever they do, they're going to become good at chess because they're always pulling out the chess board, they have the discipline, and then they're also going to get these itchy fingers and be doing something with chess. And they're always gonna be doing something and they'll be getting better. So this here with the tactics has a similar element to it that like you gotta, you gotta do it every day. Don't miss a day. You need to learn you know, two, 3,000 patterns if you want to become, uh, if you just want to be a player who doesn't complain after every game about how you played such a great game, but then you blundered a piece or you missed your winning tactic or whatever it might be, okay? Um, it, Yeah, so you want to have those tactics to not become that guy. I'm not even saying to become like a master or an 1800 or a 2500 or whatever your goal might be. If you just want to be the player who doesn't always complain about how you blundered a tactic in a winning game, um, you're going to need like 3,000 positions under your belt um, of these like tactical patterns. And if you're getting like three a day, that means a thousand days. That means three years. Every time you miss a day, you're postponing it by another day because you can't make it up with a Saturday night chess binge. All right, so so don't miss a day. Do do a few every single day, and um, now I'm going to show you how to actually do them. Now that you know, let's say you've got your 10 to 15 minutes, and you're actually doing the puzzles. The number one key to doing this effectively and efficiently is something which runs against the nature of almost every chess player I've met, and that is don't solve the puzzles. The first step to doing these puzzles is don't solve the puzzles, right? The second rule is to also not solve the puzzles, of course. What I mean by this is, these puzzles are really, you see it or you don't, when you're doing these building blocks. And this is really for players mostly from about zero to 1600, like FIDE or USCF or whatever Canadian Federation, whatever rating it might be, 37 CFC or however or BCF or whatever the uh, British thing is. Um, and if you're a stronger player, but you think you're missing some fundamental tactics or you think you're slightly weak in tactics, you could do some of this too. But when you do, like crank it down from like hard, go to, go to easy. You're just trying to make sure you know all of these patterns, okay? Um, the other, uh, like if you're on chess.com, um, what I do is I set the rating is I tell you to like set the rating range low because as you solve puzzles, your rating automatically goes up and then you get paired against more difficult puzzles. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to just get the basics. Okay. You want to like know all the basics. So if you're on chess.com, you can set it to do like a rating range. So you say like unrated mode, I want to do puzzles between 1000 and 1200 and you pound those puzzles from 1000 to 1200 for a couple months and then you go 1200 to 1400 and you pound those puzzles for the next six months or something like that because you're just trying to get all those basic patterns okay you don't want your rating going up and putting you into like puzzles that have like five different elements and you're like scratching your head trying to solve a puzzle for 30 minutes because that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to get some new patterns in just a few minutes for you okay um so once you selected puzzles at the easy level it becomes a i see it or i don't kind of thing if you don't see 94, how does it help you to sit here for 10 minutes calculating rook d8 and queen g2 and, and, and 94 without noticing queen a6? It doesn't. That's not what we're trying to do here. You're not trying to prove that you're great. You're not trying to calculate amazing blah, blah, blah. 
you know, put yourself in a game mode um, like we did with the end game study yesterday. You're just trying to know the puzzle. So basically, I set a time limit of like 30 seconds to 60 seconds for solving these. Honestly, if you don't get it after 30 seconds, like forget about it. Let it go and look at the solution. I'm not sure what all these buttons do here, so pardon me for a moment. Um, let's go to a new puzzle that we don't have the answer to. Is there an option to just ask for the solution? I don't see it. Okay, so anyway, it's white to play here, right? It's your move. Um, and I don't know what the heck this puzzle is, but you would think you would just move your queen away. All right, so um, there's a give up button on the right somewhere. I, I give up at finding that button. Anyway, if you don't see the answer to something, either press like a give up or just like make a move and then ask for the solution. Does this have a button to show us the solution? Where's the solution? Cool. Well, this puzzle is like awesome for like a simple puzzle. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat and talking to you guys, so I didn't even like see this board. Um, cool. So, geez, this is like harder than any of their hard puzzles. It's like eight moves long. All right. Um, so that makes it like a hard. Ex it's not a good example for what I wanted to show you. I was assuming like you know 94 check queen takes queen takes queen. Let's find an easier problem so that nobody's confused by what's going on. All right, so here it is white to play. There's the give up button. Found it. Um, all right, so here it's white to play. And let's see. The black king is like cut off. You can calculate rook e8, king e8, queen g8, or queen e8, <clears throat> something like that. All right, let's just suppose that I don't see the answer and um, I will give up, okay? So now, um, oh, I'm tanking my rating too. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna click forward to review the puzzle solution, okay? So you click through the solution after you haven't solved it in 30 seconds. Go back, click through the solution again. Go back, you're gonna do it three times. Got it? Now, So you didn't solve it, you click through the solution three times. Now you imagine the solution in your head three times, all right? So no piece moving. So now you go rook e8 in your head, king takes e8, queen c8, mate. Now do that three times. Let me know when you're done. All right. So uh, you've got, so, you've, so that's like the pattern, then you go on to the next puzzle. Right? The key is this period where you're putting a pattern that you don't know into your into your head by repeating it a few times. Okay? The what we're not trying to prove how many tactics we already know. We're not trying to prove how hard we can calculate, how well we can focus when we're doing this. We're just trying to get these patterns. So you're actually looking for the ones that you don't know in 30 seconds. Those are the puzzles you're looking for. Once you get them, hang out with your failure. Because it's not a failure, it's just something new that you're trying to learn. So, so don't waste your time trying to solve it, right? Just see if you know it. If you know it in 30 seconds, move on, go to the next puzzle, right? So if you do know this one, just play rookie eight check, king takes there, right? So, you know, if you do know this puzzle, then just go boom, 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 and get on with your life, right? Hit continue training. If you don't know the puzzle, after 30 seconds, stay with it for a bit, right? Put the put the wrong answer or the give up button and then click through the solution three times and then play through it in your head three times. And that's what you need to do three times with three puzzles that you didn't know, right? Huh, interesting. Knight g6, rook g7, rook c7. Or queen h6, g h6, knight g6, king g8, which probably doesn't work. This looks a little bit like a um like a game of Algechens. All right. Um and that's that's the whole thing. That's all you have to do. Three times a day. 
So, you know, it could take 10 or 15 minutes depending on how many puzzles you know and you get in 30 seconds before you find the puzzles that you don't know. But those are the ones you're looking for. And you want to find three of them each day. Get them wrong, go through the solution three times. Moving the pieces, go through the solution three times in your head and then go on and get to the next one. If you get to a point where you're not finding positions that you don't know frequently enough, that's when you might need to move up the rating range a little bit, right? Or go to a different database, right? Like maybe you know everything in, in the Lee Chess database, but you don't know everything in Chess Tempo. So go to Chess Tempo. Or you know everything in Polgar's book, but you don't know everything in 1001 Brilliant Checkmates. So go to 1001 Brilliant Checkmates. And when you really think you know everything, go to Imagination and Chess, and you'll find that there are some two-move patterns that you didn't even know. <laughs> All right. So does anyone have any questions about how to do this? Um, other than just like you don't trust me and you don't want to do it my way. If that's if that's how you feel, that's fine. You don't have to. Do whatever you like. Um, Sounds like no questions. So we are good here, right? Yeah. A place we're doing very difficult tactics. That's a separate discussion. Um, I don't know how hard the hard tactics on here get. Um, I know that they get hard on chess.com and chess tempo um, for training. Yeah, for training your more advanced calculating ability. Um. I would guess that they get hard here. I don't see why not. It's probably a huge database. So if you go up enough and hard, you probably get hard puzzles. But someone else would have to answer that for you. Because I am not sure. If you're doing puzzles from a book, should you set up a board is a good question. Um, that's going to take a bunch of time. If you have the time for it, you can do it. And it's totally cool. And I love touching a chessboard and chess pieces. Um, if... If you're really trying to like blitz through this and just get your get your three puzzles per day efficiently, then you can just go through it in a book. And honestly, that's how I usually did it was just from the book. So there's no particular you should or shouldn't set up a board totally up to you. Whichever feels good. All right. So let's go play. Seven and one. It's a little bit slow. Oh, a place in your training schedule for calculating hard ones. Yes. Yes, there is. But if you want to be calculating more advanced uh, puzzles, I would definitely want to make sure that you're pretty good at the basics first. Okay. If, if you're still learning these basics, um, you should pound them for a while before you get into more complicated puzzles and practicing your ability to put lots of patterns together and calculate more complicated things. We'll talk about it in the future, but basically most complicated tactics involve multiple different patterns and to have any hope at solving them, you have to just know all these simple patterns and then you're putting three or four different patterns together and checking like a couple details, right? But, um, you know, it's... And, you know, this particular defense, does this work here? Does that work here? But if you don't know the basic patterns, you're basically just trying to do something impossible. So it would be pretty much pointless, right? Yeah, if you're spending... If you're spending 20 plus minutes on hard puzzles... Um... That is a very good exercise if you already know the basics. But if you're not able to, but if you find that even after 20 plus minutes, you were never able to solve those puzzles, then you were taking on puzzles that were too hard for you, right? And you need to find something a level lower than that to build up to that point, right? I mean, there is a point where doing like 20, 30 minute puzzles that are hard enough to take you 20 or 30 minutes and you only get like half of them right or something, there's definitely a place for that. That's very, very very good intense training that few people have the stamina to do which is why you know at a certain point people stop improving because the training gets harder and people aren't willing to do it but um but if you're actually like solving like zero percent of some set of puzzles then basically you're you're trying something too difficult and you need to work on something else first right to be at that point <laughs> 